Good Saturday morning, everybody. It's Trevor Thompson, the self-appointed Looney Tunes critic, and it's the 1st of July. And as we like to do here on the Looney Tunes Critic uh, Commentaries, every first of the month we have a guest. And so I'm going to introduce my guest right now, David Germain. How are you, sir? I'm doing very fine. Thank you, Trevor. I'm pretty good, man. And this, is a, this isn't an official request for a commentary, but uh, you did request this, co- this cartoon, Bosco's Picture yeah. Show. So uh, tell us why you uh, chose this one in particular. Well, you know, it's a very significant uh cartoon in the Looney Tunes history. You know, it's the last one that uh, you know, Hugh Harmon and Rudolph Ising you know, produced for Leon. Yeah. It's kind of a big, bit of a big middle finger to Leon. Maybe that's maybe that's why uh, Bosco says what he says here later on. Yeah, so I'm thinking. There's a uh, this, this cartoon is also somewhat controversial, especially amongst uh, Looney Tunes fans because, uh, well, we'll bring it up when it we'll, we'll play it when it comes up. But Bosco is uh, a bit a bit of a dirty uh, dirty mouth, um, <laughs> and uh, it's yeah. Well, you even like uh, bleep this when it you put it on on YouTube. Or well, no? yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't tell people that they can't swear, but uh, I do bleep swear words. So if you want to say it, you can say it. Oh, uh, whatever. But the folks <laughs> won't hear you. I'm not going to bleep uh, Bosco though because it's debated. Okay. It's debatable yeah. whether or not he says it, you know. But uh, this is like, uh, do you, so you say this is the last one that, that Rudy and uh, Hugh did for Leon? Uh, I believe so, yeah. It did, yeah, it, w- it was a bit of, a, of an eye-opener for me when I was looking for these cartoons. And you, when you Google Bosco's filmography and you look, you go to the bottom of it, if you're not really paying attention, which indeed at the time I wasn't, you can uh, you can easily look up the, uh, the 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 Bosco character that they that they did over at um, where do they go? Did they go to MGM. MGM, yeah. They started the the animation uh, department over at MGM. Yeah. After leaving Leon, after this. Oh yeah, so that's right. They they uh, they started it, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. So I was uh, I was looking at the the list of, of stuff, and I'm looking at like the, uh, the the lobby cards, and I'm like, that is not Bosco. And then they, I like think they spelled his name differently and stuff. And there's a Jack Dempsey joke. Yeah. I, uh, I, uh, I didn't. I, I, I think like a lot of uh, people in my generation, the introduction to Bosco was uh, Looney Tunes on Nickelodeon. Is that where you learned about him? Oh uh, uh, no, I got a for Christmas. I got a book about Warner Brothers Studio, like all, all their history, and that's where I first learned about him. Do you remember what book it was? Yeah, by uh, Steve Schneider. That's all, folks, right? Yeah, that's all, folks. Dude, that we just had a bonding moment. That was my first book too. My first Looney Tunes, uh, my first book on the cartoons. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't do this joke today. No, well, you could, but you'd have to like. You wouldn't be a you. <laughs> it's a Jimmy Durante joke, and yet it couldn't be as on the nose. Oh. <laughs> do you see what I do? I entertain and inform. <laughs> oh man! But this this whole cartoon, the, I think you know the main reason this cartoon doesn't get a lot of play these days is it's it's not because of the dirty words, and it's not because of the possibility that Bosco is uh, a little uh, black kid. It's really more that there there's no. Like they don't have shows like this in theaters anymore, you know, in movie theaters. So there's not a whole lot to like. People don't understand what the reference is. What? Why is he playing the piano during the movie theater? During the movie in the theater? Like, what is that? Oh yeah. Oh, you said have at the bottom there. This yeah, this came out in 1933. Yeah, so that's exactly what the theater experience was like at the time. Yeah, certainly, and. uh my goodness. Although there were there were talkies at this time though, but but the people who like animated this movie grew up in the silent era when they would have an organist or a piano player. Yeah, I think yeah. that's. I, th- I feel like that's the main reason Bosco doesn't get a lot of play is that he was so far behind in the times that there's nothing that really happens in his cartoons that's relevant anymore. You know. Well, Hugh Harmon and and Ising were like just rehashing what they were doing with Disney because that's what they did. Yeah. 
you know, that's why they're called Looney Tunes, because they, they help Disney start the Silly Symphonies. You know, so it's just another name for Silly Symphonies, really. Same with Merry Melodies and, and Happy Harmonies when they went to MGM. Yeah, and, and the funny thing is, is that this wasn't even the, uh, the cartoon series that, that uh, showcased Warner Brothers' uh, back catalog. It was Merry Melodies that was tasked with the, uh, man, she's, Honey's Got Booty. She's got back. Well, that's the bustle for the 1890s clothes. Mm-hmm. Hey, Zeppo. I never got why the Marx Brothers were involved in this this segment. It's like, is there was there a movie where they did that? Oh, here it comes. This oh, is where yeah. the, the big line comes in, and uh, Bosco. Let's uh, let's l- listen to that now. The dirty fuck. Yeah, I don't know about you kids, but I heard him say, "I heard the dirty fuck." Yeah, that's what I kind of heard. That's what it's I think. Sounds more like fuck or something. Yeah, I think, I think um, the con- the contention is that he says the dirty folk, but even but 1933 or otherwise, I don't. I have never heard of someone referring to a singular person as folk. Yeah, you exactly. Know? And and also remember, this is pre-code, like a year before the code was put in by the Hayes office. Yeah. So, so wait. there's nothing to stop him i guess although you wonder you know if there was no there was no code before why didn't they uh why weren't there more you know swear words and whatnot in these cartoons yeah good question this kind of reminds me of uh (laughs) of that great um get a horse disney short that came out a few years ago with frozen with with him jumping in the screen yeah see you next week everybody (laughs) 